After watching this video tutorial, you will know how to match Blender 3D camera with a real photograph and use it for 3D modeling. You will learn how to do this step by step without any extra add-ins or software. This add-in free workflow is crucial when working on professional renderings in Blender and it's something I've been doing successfully for my client projects for over a decade. If you have any questions or comments on my techniques, feel free to leave them under the video so we can all learn from each other. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender which is available for free on my channel. You can find a complete playlist with other parts linked in the video description. And if you want to access all of the project files and support what I do, I share more information on that at the end of this video. Anyway, my name is Lech and welcome to my interior visualization course in Blender. Hi everyone and welcome back to the scene where we left in the previous chapter. So as I mentioned, now we are gonna start adding details to what we have already created and we need a camera to be present in our scene to do that more effectively. So I will switch to the top view here, creating a new viewport by the way. and. I will add a new camera and I will try to create something that we have in this viewport uh, on the left. So I'm going to switch to increment. Yes. Now rotate it with control key pressed. Now, as you can see, I'm pointing my camera directly uh, to the front. So the rotation that I've applied is very precise here. So with the camera selected, I'm pressing control numpad zero key. So the selected camera becomes uh, the active camera here in the viewport. And as you can see, we don't see that much right now. So I'm going to move it back a little bit in order to have more perspective here it's still not enough so the first thing that i'm going to change will be the focal length and if you're a little bit into the photography you know that one of the camera lengths used for the interior photography is 20. so let's use something similar here and as for now let's move our camera like this my next step will be hiding all of the drawings visible in the viewport so we have a little a bit better visibility and now i will select the camera and add a background image to what we have visible here so I, as you can see i'm selecting the camera icon here and going to the background images uh, checking that in and adding an image. Uh, the images that I'm going to include in this video will be linked in the this video's description. So you can also download them uh, from the official source and use them by yourself. So as you can see right now, we have an image which is aligned to our camera. And when I switch to the wireframe view, we can somehow see that the things both in the image and in our 3D viewport are related. So we have the stairs visible here as a 3D mesh outline, and we have those the same stairs in the image. Um, kind of the same situation with the counter, except it's moved uh, much more to the side. So what we have to do now is aligning all of those elements together so we more or less, I would say more than less, have the geometry outlines matching the actual well, ele geometry elements in the picture. So let's see how we can do this. Well, the first thing I'm going to do will be simplifying my 3D view a little bit. So for now, I will just hide this counter element here and probably yeah let's hide the barriers here as well so we have the main geometry elements such as floor slabs walls and the stairs visible now when i go to the wireframe view uh, 
it might be not that readable as you wish. So if you select a camera and go to the background images section here, you can also increase or decrease the transparency. And what's very important, you have to remember to select the fit uh, option here. As for this camera, since we have the, the image resolution we have set up here is the same as the actual image resolution, nothing changes if we change those options here. But if, if let's say the image you put into the camera background has a different resolution and it's selected as a stretch here, the image will be adjusted to the camera boundaries and it will be distorted. Sometimes it's not that much of a case, but if you forget to do this and start aligning elements from that point on onwards, um, yeah, you're gonna have incorrect results and that should be avoided. So just please remember to, to switch. It's, it's always best to switch to fit, I think. With all that being said, let's now get to work. And we need to find a very, let's say, strategic elements both in the geometry and in the picture, which we should be aiming to match as close as possible and then seeing if the remaining parts of the image will also follow that. I would suggest, and let me use the magic uh, annotations tool in Blender here. I would suggest matching these lines here to what our actual geometry is. Maybe let's make this color much more visible. Yeah. Um, so those two lines in our geometry are found here in this area. So what we need to do is aligning the camera that way. So those two lines move a little bit to that direction and so this angle here matches the angle we have here sounds not that hard since we have those elements quite in the same area but it might be well might be a bit tricky so let's see how it goes i will remove that and yeah let's start working the first thing i'm gonna do I will be moving my camera a little bit to the right. So as you can see, when I do that, the angles we have here become more similar. When the camera is here, you can see this one angle becomes much more open. So let's move it to this side. And now we would need to manipulate the camera so this entire element moves a little bit further. That happens when I move my camera backwards. But what also happens, as you can see, is we hit the back wall, meaning that there's something wrong. Because at this point, our goal is to put the camera, uh, the 3D camera, in a position where the actual photograph was standing when doing the picture of this interior. Like, I mean, more or less in that, that same uh, position. So if we have to do those extreme uh, camera placements like this that means we are doing something wrong so the first thing to fix that I would suggest would be changing the camera length uh, focal length to even more wide lens so let's say it's 16 and again when I have I still have to move my camera pretty far away so those elements more or less match that's definitely not a position, uh, not a solution for us. So what can we do to actually fix that? And the lens shift is the answer. To quickly explain how the lens shift works, I will just disable the background and zoom out very extensively. So you can see beyond the actual camera borders we still we still have some of the 3d well perspective visible what a lens shift allows us doing is choosing any area beyond to be rendered without changing the actual perspective let me just show you 
how this works. As you can see, when I'm changing this uh, value here or that value here, the camera focal region is moving, but the perspective uh, stays unchanged. So you can see if I zoom out and I move uh, through the viewport, the camera perspective, the distortion stays exactly the same. And what, what changes is the position of my camera, well, field of view, let's say. And you can also see that changing here in the viewport. So when I change the Y uh, value, you can see the camera field of view moves up and down and moves left and right when I change the X value. So that will be a solution to our problem right now, because when I go back, you can see what we actually need to do here is somehow moving this element downwards. When I go to wireframe view and change the lens shift like this, you can see we can now almost perfectly match those two corners. So our geometry corner here to this corner in the image. And when we do that, you can also see those perspective lines are surprisingly uh, well aligned just for this very rough test uh, that we did. So let's still move this camera a little bit backwards and let's align this view here just a bit more. And yeah, I would say we are kind of getting there. You can also see the elements we have here are matched pretty well. There is some offset visible here, as you can see. But what's the best news for us is that the perspective lines are aligned pretty, pretty nicely here, except of just a little bit of offset. It's also very nice. So next, next step would be unhiding the elements and seeing how it goes from that point. I will unhide the geometry elements by pressing Alt H. And again, I need to leave my viewport just to manually hide the drawings. And from that point onwards, for the few more uh, minutes, what we have to do is actually trying to match uh, the elements or well, just moving the camera around because it's not possible to do it just in the first try usually. Um, as you can see, what I don't like um, at this point is the perspective, the distortion difference between the stairs. So here we are way too close to them, to what we have in the reference image. The other element seems to be working well, but perhaps we can also remove this distortion or uh, this difference here. As for the counter, I think if we just move it around a little bit, that should uh, make the distortion smaller. But I think, yeah, it definitely needs some work as well. Um, so from this point onwards, I will just speed up the video a little bit and try to set up the camera. The files for this project will be also attached below the video so you can download uh, this scene at your own camera and perhaps try recreating what I'm doing right now. So let's see how it goes.
Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we will add a second camera to our interior scene and match another photo reference. This will help us in adding the details to the kitchen elements and marking the furniture placement. If you want to support what I do and access all of the project files that I've created so far, plus the Blender ready interior scenes and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, visit the Chocofor store and learn more about our subscription plans. These truly are the best money can get you if you're really considering getting better at Blender. That's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I see you very soon. Bye bye.